the wonderful Slovenia Cape Verde. Oh, tough. Just toy. Quite good. Luca goes for 37 he, in a win. He's been the best player in the tournament by a wide oh, mark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony, By a wide is, mark. Well, you got one player. Edwards has been great, but yeah, Luca. You got one guy on the Wide margin. Uh, put Anthony Edwards on Slovenia. See That's that true. Killing my bracket. The wonderful. One man show. <laughs> the Giants' Alex Cobb has a no hitter going into the eighth against the Reds. Austin Slater keeps it alive. I thought that was a trap. It was that right? It, it was a catch. Like it bounced. Still, it was a catch. More on this game in a second. Let's. Yeah, that's oh, catch. Uh, Weird. Okay. Let's Great check game. in on Venezuela, Georgia. You know what? Oh, not oh. great. And I usually don't like to do these several play. Uh, weird and wonderful oh, highlights. Wow. At least that one got blocked. Yeah, this one is. There's not, not another one. Yeah. Oh, oh no! No! <laughs> Georgia wins 70-59. Wonderful. Kidding. Wow. Checking on Mookie Betts was traded from the Red Sox. I'm sure he's not good anymore. I'm sure. Oh. oh. Again? Home run number 36, bro. He might, be, he might get the MVP. Second wow. guy ever to win one in both leagues. Oh. Dodgers have won three in a row. He's Weird. We're back to Giants Red. Alex Cobb, one out away from a no hitter. Oh, Spencer Steer. Oh, you got to lay out. <laughs> what, you're going to blame? Yeah. He didn't lay out. Oof. You got to lay out. Giants won. Threw 131 pitches. Got left in the game. So I'm like glad that. they let him. Wonderful USA Jordan. Look at this. You know what, Ramsey? Anthony Edwards getting all the shine here, but Jalen Brunson's pass, pretty nice too. What, why so is you think Brunson's Edwards has been the best the highlight there. in the tournament? Oh, he won't. That's why he's insane. <laughs> Ramsey, did you do that? Ramsey, <laughs> Ramsey, our resident Knicks super fan, <laughs> wrote the bottom line that this is about Brunson. It is. What is wrong? USA wins by 48. <laughs> Ramsey's angry. Ramsey's <laughs> look at the gray Look at the gray <laughs> Joe Burrow. Might not have a new contract extension, but it looks like he does have a healthy calf. Here he is practicing. And not really, this is not video of him practicing. More video of just him walking, but still <laughs> will take it. Bengals open up against the Browns in week one. Burrow's record against his Ohio rivals, one and four. Yeah, Baker owned him. Actually, easier to beat the Chiefs than it is the Browns. Well, for him, yeah. Yeah. So, Nick, does Joe Burrow need to make a statement? The, he needs a good. The Bengals and he need a good start. The the it's one thing, other than a Super Bowl. It's the only thing they haven't done since he's been there. I, they've been to a Super Bowl, obviously, but they haven't won it. But his rookie year, who cares? They were going to be a terrible mm -hmm. team. It was a bad start. Second year, they started five and four. Last year, they started four and four. At some point during that start, some esteemed television analysts who abandoned them entirely said they threw them to the wolves. Said guaranteed they wouldn't make the playoffs. <laughs> um, and I think they need an easier path back to the Super Bowl than the one they've had. Right. And so they are constantly on the road after round one of the playoffs. To their credit, they are in the playoffs, you know, every both of Burroughs' healthy years. But, yeah, because I, I know, Coach, you, I think, believe in the Browns more than anyone at the table. But that's a game you should win. And it's a divisional rival that, again, it, to Wilds' point, you have not had success against. And so, yeah, I think I, I, a statement not so much as they need to have like a 3-1 and one September, which they've never had with mm -hmm. Burrow. When, look, some teams match up better against other teams, and, and that's how it works. And when you look at what the Bengals consistently do to Kansas City, you know, there's that element where they consistently beat Kansas City, but they just can't beat the Browns. And you, you do have to get over, get over that hump. But in terms of it, it being an issue where you win the first game and that sets the tone for things, it's not necessarily the case. The first game of the season is so difficult to get ready for because there's so many unknowns. There's the stuff that you're doing that you practice and haven't shown. There's the stuff that they do. It's, it's hard that first game to really gauge where a team is. In New England, we got beat 30 to nothing one opening game and then ended up winning the Super Bowl. You know, getting over the Browns hump would be great for them. But more importantly to me, playing a game and seeing that his calf is okay, mm -hmm. that is by far the most important thing for, for Cincinnati. Well, and Nick, one of the reasons they've started poorly, maybe the main reason, is that Burroughs missed the training camps. And so it's the same thing here. So I, like Coach said, obviously you just want to get him through the game, but let him work off the rust. 
Because I think it's a good chance they start 0-2. I'm not guaranteeing it. They could beat Cleveland, but they haven't won there since 2017. And then they got Baltimore after that. But their next four games are very winnable. So I think they could start 0-2. And and with 17 games, still be fine. fine. But just get the rust off of him in the first couple of weeks. That's legit. But he is back at practice today. And I know Coach made fun of me for this yesterday. He was in good nature. But when Joe Burrow got hurt, some of the best NFL reporters in the world said, don't expect to see Joe Burrow on a Bengals practice field again until that contract's done. And I brought up yesterday that it is odd, and it is an unspoken odd NFL story, that the most no-brainer of all the four quarterbacks who we thought were going to get contracts this offseason, mm-hmm. the one who has accomplished the most, the one who was the number one pick, the one who has done basically been a perfect NFL player, aside from getting his knee blown out because they didn't build an offensive line his rookie year, that he still hasn't gotten paid. And the fact that we are now, what what are we, 12 days away from the first Bengals game of the year, yeah. and he still hasn't gotten that contract is an odd, simmering story. Yeah. It's an odd story. So is Chris Jones. But, yeah. Well, we know what's happening. <laughs> no, but they need to thing. pay him. Coming that's up next. It's just going to cost more in the future. They they have- they- we do have D-Hop now and two new faces, Anthony Richardson and C.J. Stroud. So, Nick, who do you got? All right, I'll go very quick here. Houston's going to finish last. Luckily for them, they don't have their own pick because their GM, who is 6-26-1 and and one, since coming over from New England, who said today, we can't be judged on our record. It's about the process. <laughs> they, I don't know what they're doing there, but they really wanted Will Anderson. I like D'Amico Ryans, but he is in for a hell of a season. And by the way, if they don't win at home against Indy in Week 2, they could be winless well past Halloween. Speaking of and, Indian, and I like Nick a lot personally, but he certainly judged the previous two head coaches. By, the by the, yeah, he's on his third head. Co- that's absolutely right. He's on his third head coach. He's six twenty-six right. and one. Got to judge us on our process. Well, your process was you traded away next year's first-round pick, which is going to be a top-four pick. I don't understand it. I said I'd go quick. Sorry, I a little worked up there. Indy, <laughs> uh, I'm excited to watch Anthony Richardson. I think Shane Steichen could be quite good. I don't know what they're doing with Jonathan Taylor. I don't know what the latest Jim Irsay tweet's going to be. I have them in third place. They'd be in last place in most divisions. Number two is the Titans. The question is, do they pull the plug on Ryan Tannehill? Malik Willis didn't look close to ready. Now they drafted Will Levis. They know they eventually need to go and rebuild. But is Vrabel too good of a coach for them to ever really fully bottom out? I think Vrabel is a great head coach, a truly great head coach. But I don't trust the team. And then, of course, The coronation, the prince who was promised year two, Peyton or year three, for him, just like Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning 2.0, led the league in touchdowns, led the league in yards in year three as the defending AFC South champion. I see something similar happening for the prince. And while all you guys mocked me all last year and all this year, I would have... I would imagine every single person at this table is picking the Jags to win that division and go back to the playoffs. Brew, I'm excited to see your playoff picks. (laughs) At number four... You got that wrong. It'll be the Colts. Okay. All right. I like Anthony Richardson, but he's going to be up and down. He can run the football. What was he, 6-17, and 17 and he's doing this? I mean, just it's going to be a <laughs> roller coaster ride for him throwing the football, but I think maybe a bright future. Jonathan Taylor, we know what's going on with that um, as far as missing at least the first four games. At number three, I got Houston. Look, D'Amico Ryans, I like Will Anderson. You know, C.J. Stroud, I guess, if, it is, if he's going to be the quarterback – um, I do like him a lot. Obviously, as a rookie, he'll have his ups and downs. But they're coming off three horrible years. I think the future is brighter, and I think they can finish third. At number two, we've got the Titans. Like you said, Vrabel, great coach. Um, Derrick Henry, I, he didn't look spent last year. He That's didn't right. look like He's he was good. large, so he'll still do his so thing. The first? only thing I don't like about Trevor well, Lawrence well, there's nothing, nothing. is that Nick is so obnoxious Just, about him you know. and picked him early. I like Trevor oh, Lawrence. Oh, stop, I, bro. What are you Nick, doing Nick today? Nick goes so... So overboard on him with yeah. the wings. Bro, we've all known it. Trumpets, the Bugle Lawrence Boys, and all that. Jimmy G. It's a weak division, too. Okay. It's a weak division. But I, I, I expect Trevor to have a Coach, can I show you something? A, a stat? Because we're filled with a lot of propaganda on this show. A ton. Here's how Trevor Lawrence's year went last year. Hmm. You would think it was just perfect the whole year. Well, hmm. through weeks That's one through eight, good. it was mediocre. Then he caught fire. Beat the Cowboys on national television. Everybody watches and wow, this guy's great. And then week 16 through his playoff games, he threw six touchdowns, six interceptions, including four interceptions in the first half of one playoff game. That means in the other five games, he threw two. This is what that would be. <laughs> Just adding it up. Coach? 
Is the hype for Trevor Lawrence justified or a little too much? Yeah, like bringing in the guys that play the flutes or whatever they play. Is, the royal is, trumpeters. Is, 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 <laughs> is over over the top and, and way too early. And, and look at it. Look at his season last year. He didn't. He had a five-game losing streak at the beginning of the season. Over he did have. Man. He did have a five-game winning streak at the end of the season. But it wasn't like it was prolific in terms of interceptions or, or in terms of touchdowns. He had eight touchdowns and two interceptions, but much better. Sure. And then you go. Now he ends with a 96 quarterback rating. Go into the playoffs. And he's got two games with a 70 and a 74 quarterback rating. Hold on. So he's 20, he's 25 That's points so lower than he was in the regular okay. season. So we're going to kill Josh Allen for being up and no. down. Uh, we're going to coronate, no. we're going to like coronate no. this guy. And listen. Josh Allen is talked about like he's the best or the second best quarterback in football. Trevor Lawrence, folks, on this show, we're saying he's not as good as Mac Jones. He might be a bust. Uh, folks, and if folks. we are not going to act as if. For any other player in the league, we would talk about the resiliency in playing the worst half of football of your life, being down four scores in your first ever playoff game, and leading a comeback like we saw. Nobody ever says when the 28-3 comeback all the for Brady. Because of how he poor he played. That, right. he th w w the 28-3 comeback, no one ever says, well, it would have been just 21-3. to three. We didn't throw that pick six. How impressive is it? No. We threw four. We talk, I'm sure we, we would mention okay. it. All right, that's fine. Listen, guys, I'm happy. I thought after that, after last year, the Trevor Lawrence thing wouldn't be that good of a topic on the show because everyone would have literally bent the knee as you did when the trumpeters came he, up. And then we would. He had trumpeters for Carson Wentz. He had trumpeters no, for Carson No, I did not have guys. He had, had trumpeters for Baker Carson Mayfield. Wentz. That is, that is it doesn't true. matter who it is. None he's got true. a trumpeter Coach, for Coach, that is the, the record does not reflect. <laughs> they're, in, they're in the it green was, room was, right now. Patrick Mahomes and Trevor Lawrence. Anthony Richards, bring out the trumpeters. Joe Burrow.